Okay, so here we've got a scatter graph. Um, the thing with a scatter graph is each of the crosses represents a piece of data. So this cross here, it's a house with four windows valued at 175,000. And so what we can see from a scatter graph is a relationship. So here we're looking at a relationship between the number of windows and the value of a house. And the, the question says, what correlation does the scatter graph show? So what's the relationship here? So we can see there's a kind of an upwards trend. So we've got the points following this kind of direction. That means as the number of windows goes up, the value of the house goes up. And that's called a positive correlation. Positive correlation. Um, if it was if going down, so if as number of windows increased, the house value decreased, and it follows like a downwards line, that would be called a negative correlation. Negative correlation. And if the points were all over the place and there wasn't a real pattern, so like that, uh, that would be no correlation. No correlation. So we need to be able to look at scatter graphs and look at the relationship between them. So we can say as a number of windows increases here, the house value also increases. Um, it's important to note, though, that just because there's a correlation, it doesn't mean that there's causation. So it doesn't mean so correlation. Correlation. Um, does not mean causation causation so just because as a number of windows goes up as a pattern the house value goes up it doesn't mean the number of windows causes the house value to go up so if I decided to put 10 new windows in the same house um, thinking that will increase the house value um, it probably looks silly and it probably won't so correlation does not mean causation it just means that there's a relationship there um, so here's a question um, what, so what type of correlation does the scatter graph show firstly? Well, it's going down. It's a negative correlation. It's going down. So negative correlation. And if I wanted to describe the relationship, as the temperature increases, the number of coats sold decreases. Um, so on another day, the temperature was 8 degrees and 200 coats were sold. So 8 degrees, 200 coats. We're going to show this information. And that's just going to be an X8200. Draw a line of best fit. So what we need to do is we need to draw a line roughly going through the middle of the points. So here I can get six points on both sides. If I do a line down there, um, maybe angle a little bit. So what we're trying to do is get the least distance from the x's to the line, so the line that best fits these points. So if we've got six on both sides, it goes roughly through the middle in the same direction, that's a good line of best fit. Um, so we've done that. On another day, the temperature was 12 degrees. Estimate the number of coats sold. So 12 degrees is here. We go up to our line and then across across from our line. Now we should use a ruler here. Um, I can't do that so I'm just gonna do the best thing I can with my eye. Um, and that's 175 there. So that's 175. Let's say it's a roughly 190. Um, roughly 190 coats. Um, there'll be a margin of error in an exam that you're allowed to have an answer between something and something. Um, so if, as long as you've drawn a good line of best fit that goes from the middle of the points, um, your answer should be within the, within the range. Okay, here's another question. Um, pause the video and see if you can give it a go. Okay, so the correlation here, the correlation here is positive. As the math score increases, the English score is increasing as well. Um, this is a good example of correlation not being causation. Um, it's unlikely the maths test score 
causes the English chess god to increase. Um, there's almost certainly an underlying cause of that, and it's like effort, how much effort someone puts in um, to the tests. Um, if someone puts more effort into their maths, they're more likely to put effort into English, but it doesn't cause it. So correlation, there is. Causation, there's probably not. Um, another student's got 40 on their maths, 50 on their English. Let's show it. So 40 and 50. Let's put an X there. So that's on there now. And the line of best fit. Okay, for the line of best fit, we want roughly the same number of points on both sides. So we can have five on each side here. We're going to have a line that goes somewhere down there. So let's try and draw one on. Um, maybe a little bit down. Okay, so there's a line of best fit. Um, scored 30 on their maths test. Estimate the score on their English test. So we've got 30 here, up to the line, and then across. So it's just underneath 35. So let's say 34. 